Today's title is called Gravy or Cake. I was in the kitchen last night attempting to make white gravy. Notice, I said attempting. It turned out horrible. It was a glumpy, horrible mess. Most people would have discarded this mess and seen it as a defeat. However, God saw this defining moment as an opportunity. What can a person do with flour and water? Many things. For example, homemade paste for gluing. Blend it. Add salt and make Play-Doh. Or one can blend it up, add sugar, butter, along with various other ingredients to make a cake. It all depends on your perspective. It all depends on whether you want to let a disaster overtake you or whether you want to slowly take time to perfect a masterpiece. You may feel that icky white goo you made can't be used. Look up and be of good courage. Listen to what Jesus has to say concerning this. Matthew 19.26 With men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. That means gravy roux can be turned into cake. Consider the origin of mankind. We were made by God. We were made perfect. Job 33, 6. Behold, I am according to thy wish in God's stead. I also am formed out of the clay. Like the gravy I tried to make, I had the right ingredients. If I had the right ingredients, what happened? How did I get a mess? I got a mess because I didn't follow instructions. God made blueprints when he formed mankind. Mankind was perfect. God allowed mankind to be a part of the process of creation. God gave one simple rule for success. Genesis 2.16 And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Notice, Adam had freedom to eat of every tree of the garden, so it wasn't like that he was forced to eat leftovers or food that he may not have liked. He had a wide selection, a glorious buffet before him to pick and choose whatever his heart desired. All God did was give him a simple rule, and as a loving parent, he informed him of the consequence that would result from breaking this simple rule. Genesis 2.17 but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Plain and simple. Don't eat, the, don't eat of the tree, because if you do, you will die. Who would want to die? No one I know does. So he stayed away from it until he succumbed to peer pressure from his wife Eve. Why did Eve want to eat of the tree? Because temptation entered the garden in chapter 3 of Genesis. A subtle serpent suggests to Eve the consequence is invalid. Genesis 3, 4 And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. The serpent even suggests that the father is withholding a privilege from her, restricting her of what the father has. Genesis 3, 5 For God doth know that in the day ye eat, ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Let's look and compare the garden with the gravy roux. I told myself, you don't need a recipe. It takes too long to find one, and you need to cut corners to prepare dinner in time. You've seen how it is done. You use flour and water. How hard can that be? It will turn out fine. Now back to the garden. You won't die, and the benefit is that you will know good and evil like God. The gravy roux. You don't need a recipe. It will turn out fine. You've seen it done before. Use flour and water. It can't be too hard. Back to the garden. Eve sees the fruit. She weighs the pros and the cons. She lets all the information soak in and marinate in her thoughts. Genesis 3.6 and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. 
back to the gravy room. Saving time is good and is pleasant to the, my evening. I won't have to listen to these kids murmur and complain about supper. So using that series of rationale, I decided not to use the recipe. I discarded the directions and winged it. So what happens when instructions that are given aren't followed? Genesis 3, 7 And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. Back to the gravy room. I put water and flour in a blender, blended it, and brought water to a boil with, but winded up with a starchy, separated mess. How am I going to fix this? Genesis 3, 9, and 10. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. Back to the gravy room. My husband comes in the kitchen and says, What are you doing? I am trying to make white gravy, but it didn't turn out right. I will try to make you a late birthday cake instead. Adam was caught, and he tried to hide now that he was aware of being naked. The gravy turned out bad, so I wouldn't admit that I needed help. I hid the mess and tried to turn it into a cake. Adam and Eve had consequences to pay for their actions. They tried to make excuses for their mistake and pass blame. In Genesis 3, 12, and 13, you will see examples of shifting the blame. In Genesis 3, 14 through 24, God brings forth the consequences. But notice, in Genesis 3, 21, even when giving consequences, our loving Father provides them clothing. The clothing came from animals. Animals had to be sacrificed to cover man's nakedness since they were aware of it. Consequences for the gravy roux. Lost time, lost effort. Worst of all, complaints of hunger grew. Also, a terrible unleavened cake that now must be sacrificed to the dog and birds of the air. The cake was an embarrassment and a reminder. For Adam and Eve, being naked was now an embarrassment and a reminder that animals died for them to be clothed. Did Adam and Eve achieve benefits from disobedience? No. They were given miserable consequences and evicted. Did Mrs. Layton receive benefits from disobedience? No. I received miserable consequences and my cake is getting evicted. I tried to eat it, but it was thick, gummy, and over-sugared. The result? A heavy, sick feeling in my stomach. I think Adam and Eve felt the same way once they were punished and evicted. Adam and Eve introduced sin into the world, and it still affects every human in existence today. My poor choice, thank God, only affected my family. The good news is that despite our transgressions, Christ paid the penalty for our sins. When he did that, we were able to fulfill the law through Christ and be blameless. 1 Corinthians 5, 7 Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The old leaven is our sin. The new lump is us being transformed by the grace of God when we accept that Jesus died for our sins, are sorrowful to repentance, and are washed in his blood. Baptism. I had a gooey mess of old unleavened batter. Physical example, refer to gravy roux. God did help form a new lump. Bad cake transformed to dog biscuit. This dog biscuit will benefit the dog and be good food for the birds of the air. Also, I will always have a funny story that brings with me a lesson learned. I can share this story with others and help them see the goodness of our Father. People rem will remember this silly story as it is passed on and know that through Jesus we are saved. God could have rejected us and threw us away. Instead, he found a way to recycle us and mold us into a, per a new product, thanks to the main ingredient, Jesus Christ. Jesus uplifts us and holds us together. He is the water that keeps the clay, us, from drying out while God transforms us into a beautiful vessel of pottery.
to be placed in the kiln so he can display it in his window for all to see and admire. I want you to take these happy thoughts with you today, and I want this message to change your life. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, please bless the people that receive this message. Help strengthen them and help encourage them to come to Jesus and overcome their bondage and sin. Help them be free and uplifted, transformed and renewed in your grace and in your love. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.